I'd like to talk to you briefly today about a project entitled the Integrated Assessment of Water Resources for Unconventional Oil and Gas Plays in West Central Alberta. And I appreciate the opportunity to uh, going first here right after our, our uh, uh, keynote luncheon address because I feel this is a good example of business leading the way in a collaborative effort to help, uh, help show government where to go in terms of water issues, particularly with respect to uh, the industry. And I have to... <laughs> Well, the government is being very cooperative on this one. So uh, I think we've got a good collaboration going. So I, I, I want to introduce the, uh, the study briefly. Uh, this is a map of West Central Alberta. So we've got Edmonton up around here. We've got Red Deer off to the side there. We've got the BC Alberta border in there. So it's a huge area of West Central Alberta. These two fairways have outlined out to the east here. You may have heard of the Duvernay Shale play and in yellow, the Montney uh, Shale and Siltstone play. So these are unconventional oil and gas plays. They require hydraulic fracturing to make them go, so they require immense quantities of water in order to be successfully exploited. They're in the early stages of exploration and development right now, so companies haven't yet set their development plans or started to use their huge quantities of water, but we see that it's coming. We have experience with this in other uh, fairways like this, as in the Horn River Basin in northeastern BC, where we undertook a similar project. So PTAC, the Petroleum Technology Alliance Council, is providing seed funding. Uh, in the year one of the project, there are eight uh, industry operators that are participating. We're actually adding two or three more in year two as they see the value of the project. Uh, and in terms of government cooperation, the work we are doing supports the new Alberta Energy Regulators play-based construction of an unconventional regulatory framework. That's a lot of fairly long words. I'll try to explain a little bit more towards the end what it really means. So there are three major components to this project. Uh, important to note, we've talked a lot today, or I've heard a lot today, about, of course, surface waters. Uh, and that's one of the components of the project. But we're also looking very hard at deep saline aquifers. There's a lot of water, of course, that's buried deeply beneath the uh, plains of West Central Alberta in, uh, in sandstones and carbonates and things like that that can host water. Most of that water is saline. It's a saline or more saline than seawater. It's not particularly useful to anybody else in terms of agricultural domestic use. So it's a great uh, body, a, a potential water source for industry to use where they can get at it in ec economic fashion. The shallow aquifers uh, are the sediments near the surface and shallow bedrock, and these are where most people drill their water wells for domestic and agricultural purposes. So we are looking at all three components of potential water sources in this project. And in addition, uh, you know that there is a need at times for water disposal associated with oil and gas development where we have very concentrated brines or produced waters. They have to be disposed safely in zones where they're not going to interfere with any other water supplies and deep saline aquifers can fill the bill for that as well. So the goal of the project at the end of it is a comprehensive assessment of water resources that can be used by industry, but it's not going to be held confidential to industry. It will be shared with regulators and it will be made public so the public stakeholders can see the results of the work that's been done. It'll be uh, uh, compartmentalized, or sorry, it'll be, it'll be compiled in a GIS-based data framework so that people can go and look and basically find the answer for their particular area. It's going to support all stages of exploration and development in these plays and it should be a very flexible project. So I'm just going to show you a slide from each of the three components just as a quick example of the sorts of things we're doing. This is mapping in the deep saline aquifer, so there's that big uh, project fairway that I showed you before. Uh, this is a map of the Cardium Formation. It's, it's a, a sandstone of uh, around 90 million years in age. It's, it's deeply buried between 500 and, and 1200 meters deep in the northern part here. And what our year one study showed is that this area outlined in blue is an area where companies can drill down, access the cardium formation, and find saline water in it that they can use to support their fracking operations. Again, this water is too deep and too saline to be of use for anyone else, uh, but it is only available in this particular part of the area. If you're over here, you'll get gas in the cardium and the red. If you're down here, you're in the Pembina oil field and you'll get oil out of the cardium. So it's only a deep saline aquifer answer there. We've done similar mapping for five other aquifers that are deep and saline uh, found throughout the entire study area here. We have found that most of those deep saline resources are focused in the northern part of the area. So we've got some issues to address in year two of finding potential deep water sources in the south. 
And in year two, which is just beginning right now, we're going to build on this work and do some more quantification. For example, we'll find out how many wells do you need to drill into particular aquifers to get certain volumes uh, and uh, rates of water to support your operations. Uh, the shallow groundwater aspect is more of a data compilation effort. There is a lot of information around in various government and industry reports, and uh, this simply is a map of the entire area. It's a bit bigger than the subsurface area because it includes surface watersheds as well. Uh, but shallow groundwater, uh, we've compiled all of these various uh, hydrogeological cross-sections and information, and uh, in year two, we're going to do much more detailed characterization work of the shallow aquifers, and there's going to be particular focus on the Pascapu Formation, which are uh, the sandstones that we see cropping out around Calgary are part of the Pascapu Formation, so obviously in some areas they are very shallow. We need to, uh, and right at the surface. In fact, they're right at the surface through much of this study area. So we need to have a very, very good understanding of the characteristics of the Pascapu Formation if it is going to be used for industry purposes because there are a lot of people that have their domestic and agricultural water wells in the Pascapu. So we have to have a really good understanding of it in order to avoid potential conflicts. Thirdly, the uh, component of surface water. We've compiled more than 50 gigs of GIS, GIS data into project databases. These have come from a variety of uh, government regulatory uh, academic sources. And essentially what it means is all of the stream flow uh, monitoring stations, precipitation patterns, just about everything that's relevant to surface water has been compiled into a database that covers this entire area. And uh, it's not my area of specialty, but I know I've seen the uh, interactive website that has been posted to, and it's quite amazing the different maps and, and the information you can pull up for any given area. The benefits of the project, and a little bit of repetition here, but I really want to make the point is when you look at this large area in West Central Alberta, where we know there's going to be a lot of shale, oil, and gas development and a great deal uh, of, of hydrocarbons coming out of it, will have an integrated water assessment. The Alberta regulator is now putting together regulations that are suited to unconventional resource development. Historically, our, our regulations have addressed conventional oil and gas. They don't use nearly as much water uh, for fracking and other purposes. So we really need a new regulatory regime. So in fact, my colleagues were in Edmonton yesterday working with uh, the AER, as it's now, now called, to uh, help decide how we need to pitch or or produce our results so that they can use them in order to make sensible guidelines. Uh, and ultimately the goal here, and I'm talking about these different things, but really what the goal is, is that anybody, uh, industry, stakeholders, regulators, can go into this area, they can go into the, uh, the database, the website, click on the area they're interested in, whether it's where they're within the Upper Peace watershed or in the North Saskatchewan, wherever it is, they can find out what the options are. If a, if a company is uh, starting a project in a particular area, uh, anyone can go in and find out why they've decided to use deep saline water or why they've decided to use surface water. They can see what the options are and what is behind the decisions. If, uh, if there is, a, for example, a rancher that feels that, uh, that his Pascapu shallow water wells are in danger, he can go in and find out why or why not an industry operator is choosing to apply to use the Pascapu in an area. So there'll be a lot of technical information all in one place that should support uh, intelligent and well-backed decisions. <laughs>